Welcome people. In this video, we want to look at uh, poliomyelitis, the pathogenesis, okay? Pathogenesis of poliomyelitis. So far, what we have seen? So far, we have seen it is a picoRNA virus, structure icosahedral symmetry, spherical, it is non-enveloped, capsid has 60 subunits, then heat labile, likes acid pH, we saw the antigens D and C, polio types, type 1, type 2, type 3. Now we want to look at the pathogenesis. <clears throat> what do you mean by pathogenesis? Like how the disease uh, comes and spreads within the body, correct? So let's move back here, poliomyelitis, pathogenesis. See the polio viruses are transmitted by fecooral root, okay? Fecooral root, you should remember, so strange, it is just one uh, dirty food if you have you can get polio how strange right wow now fico oral root uh, it is transmitted most common otherwise there can be droplet information infection also droplet infection also can happen so this is the transmission okay and even conjunctival contact all this by can you imagine how powerful this virus is wow then poliovirus uh, causes what? Poliomyelitis. Poliovirus causes poliomyelitis. Myelo means spinal cord. So the spinal cord is affected. Okay. So let's move on. In the textbook, pathogenesis has been explained under uh, these headings. The transmission, how they multiply locally, receptor, spread to the spinal cord, central nervous system, site of action, neuron degeneration. Okay. So let us look at transmission. Transmission you already know. Fico oral root droplet infection. These are the two possibilities. So this diagram is depicting fico oral root droplet infection. We haven't put diagram. Then what happens? It multiplies in the intestinal epithelium. So we are here currently multiply locally. So it multiplies in the intestinal intestinal epithelial cells, submucosal lymphoid tissues, tonsils, and Peyer's patches. So <coughs> Multiply locally, this much at least you remember, in this time. Okay. Now coming to this point here, receptor, the viral entry into the host cells is mediated by binding into the CD155 receptors present on the host cell surface. So the receptor CD155, which is present on the cells, on our cells, those receptors help the viral entry. The viral RNA will enter the host cell because of this receptor CD155. This you should write in the exam. Okay, remember some things like pathogenesis of polio and all they have asked so many times and so important that small things like this can get you so many marks. Okay, don't forget all the CD155 receptor and all that. Okay, which receptor? CD155 receptor for polio virus. Very good, very good. Then, <clears throat> spread to central nervous system or spread to spinal cord. Obviously, spinal cord is part of central nervous system. So, there are two types of spread they have given here, hematogenous spread and the neural spread. Let us look at hematogenous spread now. It's the most common. So, via the blood, the virus will reach the regional lymph nodes and they will spill over to the bloodstream. Uh oh, they went to the regional lymph nodes and from there to the bloodstream. From lymph nodes to bloodstream. Okay, so from lymph nodes to blood, it is gone. So from lymph nodes to the blood, it has gone. Okay, uh, after further multiplying in the reticuloendothelial system, now the virus enters the bloodstream again, causing secondary viremia. Then it is carried to spinal cord. So there is a lymph node to blood, there is viremia, there is virus in blood. Secondary viremia, they are saying, then it is going to spinal cord and brain. Okay. There is something called here as secondary viremia. That is because from the blood, it goes to the red, in the reticular system, reticular endothelial system, it will multiply, then it enters the bloodstream again. So there is secondary viremia. Okay. And then it enters the spinal cord and brain. Now let us go to neural spread. Fine, shall we go to neural spread? Currently we have finished what and all, the virus came in via fecal oral route or droplet infection or conjunctival uh, uh, contact. 
then what happens uh, it goes to the intestine in the intestine the host cells will have cd155 receptor from there it will get uh, absorbed into the cell the rna will enter the cell there uh, from there it will go to the regional lymph node the lymph node from the lymph node it will enter the blood stream in the reticular endothelial system it will multiply the virus then again it will enter the blood this is called a secondary viremia from this uh, the polio virus reaches the spinal cord and central nervous system currently we have reached where central nervous system okay neural spread also we had to discuss the virus may also spread directly through nerves especially following tonsillectomy where the virus may spread via loss of pharyngeal nerve present in the tonsillar fossa so going to neural spread directly via nerves especially in uh, people who have tonsillectomy okay glossopharyngeal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve easily helps the spread of virus okay glossopharyngeal nerve so neural spread over now let us move on to site of action site of action guys are you awake where are we hematogenous spread over neural spread over of polio virus now we are going to site of action okay site of action the final target for the polio uh, virus is the motor nerve ending that is anterior horn cells of the spinal cord which leads to muscle weakness and flaccid paralysis so which is the final target it's the motor nerve oh, oh motor nerve is the final target for the polio virus <clears throat> the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord which leads to muscle weakness and flaccid paralysis so where is this anterior see this is the one they are showing here anterior horn cells this is the dorsal and this is the anterior horn cells just look at this diagram this one anterior horn cells via which the motor neuron to the muscles okay this is the dorsal one which is sensory anterior one is the motor and it loves this motor neuron it will come here to the anterior horn cells and the motor neurons and that is where it will start acting the virus anterior horn cells okay <clears throat> so finally what will happen muscle weakness and flaccid paralysis okay right site of action we have come wake up guys if you are sleeping so have, are you able to see here the muscle wasting flaccid paralysis okay then moving on neuron degeneration okay look at this last point here neuron degeneration guys the virus infected neurons undergo degeneration obviously if the virus is attacking the neurons neurons are now going to undergo degeneration earliest change in neuron is the degeneration of nissl body aggregated ribosomes normally found in cytoplasm of neurons so the nissl body will degenerate degeneration of nissl body what are nissl bodies they are ribosomes which you can see in the neuron it is found in the cytoplasm right those nissl bodies will degenerate okay degeneration of nissl bodies of the neurons so keywords here fecal oral route cd155 in intestine host cells motor nerve is the target degeneration of the neuron nissl body degeneration okay then let's move on to clinical manifestations okay clinical manifestations <clears throat> guys uh, clinical manifestations actually they have not asked in the exam however we'll just peep into this in the next video come back for the next video where we will look into the clinical manifestations of polio okay bye bye guys so far what and all we saw only the pathogenesis of uh, a uh, polio virus which causes polio myelitis so we saw the pathogenesis of polio myelitis okay myelo means spinal cord the spinal cord is affected come back for the next video we will see clinical manifestation say bye bye bye